Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Forge. Whether you're sitting at your desk, driving to work, or you're in some other far-off corner of the old world, this is Square Hammer. How is everybody doing today? Yeah, real good, mate. Real good. Yourself? I'm fantastic. Blue, how are you doing? Uh, tired and trying not to run off the road. That's, I... that's always the plan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would encourage you to keep it between the navigational beacons there, buddy. And the, uh, the main point is to not let my models break. So that's right. That's all that matters. <laughs> so, Blue, you're, you're on your way up to Bethlehem, <laughs> Pennsylvania right. for a fantasy tournament. And this is... Yes, sir. How, when was the last time you played in a fantasy tournament? Uh, I think the last one, it was a year and a half ago, I guess, when we played at uh, Game Garrison in Fredericksburg. Um, I think that was the last one, which, well, that was about a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago. I don't know, you tell me, year and a half probably. Probably, I don't know, it all kind of runs together. Yeah, but um, before that, oh man, like five, six years, honestly. So on a scale of one to ten, how hyped are you for this tournament? Uh, I'd give it, okay, so I'm tired. I'm going to give it a 9.3. <laughs> uh, super, super specific. Being tired and having to drive five hours, you know, three, three and a half yesterday and an hour and a half today, it does suck a little out of you, but it's worth it. So it's fine. 9.3 is good. That's a good, <laughs> that's a good rating. The key, the key is coffee, friend. Yeah. Good point. I'm probably going to stop actually on the way and. Stop at Mickey D's or something, get some of their coffee real quick. Yeah, man. Good call. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. So, so, what's the name of this tournament, Blue? It's the name, the place is, I think it's Portal Comics and Games. And yeah. the name of it is uh, Winter War in the Valley, I believe. Is that right? Y'all have it in front of you. It's, I think. it's Winter Warhammer in the Valley. Ah, okay. Nice. I was close. I was close. Um, it's a place I've is, never is been this, to. Um, I never knew that store was there, so this will be good. Awesome. So is this um, like a new tournament that's come out, or is, do, is it like a recurring one that they've done before? Like, what's the story? They said they have actually done them um, maybe maybe once every five, six months, so maybe twice a year. But okay. <clears throat> with the resurgence of – it might even be less than that, but with the resurgence of just, you know, what uh, Games Workshop the dropped, and hype video, yeah. yeah, all that stuff. So people were back on the train. They're like, let's play some games. So. That's that's what we're doing. Excellent. No, that's what yeah. I want to hear. Yeah. David, no, would you like to hear? Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just gonna say, I've definitely seen a resurgence pretty much everywhere. Like people I'm talking to back home in England, like seeing a lot more eighth edition happening, and um, you know, sixth edition as well. Um, just anything that's set right. in the old world, people are keen for. But um, you know, definitely eighth because I guess it was the last edition of fantasy, so it's what everyone you know, associates it with. Um, but mm -hmm. over here, you know, in my new home in Australia, like, you're seeing heaps of it, like, lots of it going on at game stores. I keep finding new players, man. Like, they just keep coming out of the woodwork. I thought I knew, like, pretty much everyone who played 8th edition in the Brisbane scene, but nah, like, there's heaps coming out of the woodwork, which is great. I, I agree with that. We actually found two recently. One, um, this guy named William, um, younger guy but is like super high into high elves i'm sure nice. uh renee loves to hear that but super he's like all about high elves on uh, um this other guy that i uh played and just met last week two weeks ago um yep. plays warriors of chaos and he has a ton of armies and they're all classic stuff and he's, he's actually going he's driving from virginia and he's going to this tournament too uh oh, which is cool um yeah Shout really nice guy that. Shout out to Rusty. Hopefully, I get to play him again. Um, but yeah, people are definitely coming out of the woodwork. So if if you play Rusty again, I'm not sure he's going to enjoy it as much as you are. <laughs> well, Based I on... didn't. Uh, yeah. Well, he changes the list up a little bit, so hopefully he'll have a much better, uh, much better time. His list wasn't bad before, but you know, it's just he had to break the rust off. That's all. Yeah. Neat. <laughs> I see oh, what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's let's go through the tournament pack real fast because it's um it's an interesting set of scenarios. Mm. So it's uh it's a twenty five hundred point. Um, 
three scenario event. <clears throat> and it uses the end times hero and lord allowance. Uh, the Beastman, Bretonia, and Skaven use their most recent books. Chaos Dwarves use Tamarcon. Uh, you can play as Kislev if you want, and there are no special characters of any kind allowed. Um, they did do some house rules, and um, those are that if you're playing Tomb Kings, um, you can choose. you can choose either your general or your hierophant as your general or as your army focus, and gave Tomb Kings a 12-inch March bubble just like Vampire Counts. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I do too. I like yeah. that a lot. Um, uh, so on the 50% Lords and Heroes, um, I was talking to Rusty because Rusty moved from that area. So he actually, that used to be Rusty's main store. He said most people actually won't really take advantage of that. Uh, they're a lot more, they're pretty casual gamers. So I, I expect to see a lot of balanced lists. Um, well, that's good. Yeah, that's that's what I'm looking forward to. So a lot of balanced lists for fun. And then... Yeah. This this event was really sold as a narrative three game tournament. I mean, it's not like a kick your face in tournament, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. As my list will show, it is definitely not a kick in the face. <laughs> yeah. All right. So here are the other house rules. Um, hills block line of sight, except to and from large targets. Um, Which I like. Yeah, so you lose. There's not really a true line of sight when there's a hill in the way. Um, buildings are impassable terrain. Uh, I assume that means you cannot garrison them. Yes, that is correct, yeah. Um, Does that also mean they're scrapping the watchtower mission? <clears throat> there's no watchtower scenario in this pack. Yeah, we're not, we're not playing that garbage. Fair. Um... All forests and water features use the mysterious terrain rules. Uh, okay, this is this is a good one. I like this one a lot. Cavalry with a three-up armor save or better gain devastating charge. Yes. So, okay. Yeah, I love that one. Obviously, Bretonians, Empire, any, anything with heavy cap, dragon princes. Uh, Even Van <clears throat> Cold uh, ones, blood like, knights, blood knights, uh, black knights for undead. Um, all the warriors of chaos knights. Like, hopefully, it just bring. It, it's obviously an attempt to bring them back in line with the. the even of, Mornfang, even Mornfang get it. Because <laughs> uh, plus one attack is what they need. <laughs> <Yes>. Exactly. <laughs> um. The, the next thing is disruption breaks steadfast. So yep. as long as you've got two ranks in the flank or the rear, you... Now, that, that, that includes the first rank, correct? Yes. Okay. All right. So as long as you have ten models or, like, a monstrous infantry of six models. Yes. Gotcha. Um, monsters count as one rank for purposes of steadfast. Love it. Yep, I'm not going to fight it. Uh, monsters and chariots benefit from the ward save of the character riding them with one step of reduction. So if you have a hero or a lord with a four up ward save, your uh, monster or chariot has a five up. Yeah, it's, it's, that's really strong. Um, I think it's especially to counter like cannons. Shout out the field from like turn one. But man. That's nasty to get the frag and five up board save. My monster is like three up four up. Pretty good. <laughs> no, it's, it's like I had a read through it. It's a pretty interesting um, tournament pack. Um, bits of it I love. Like I thought was like a good sort of fix to you know a couple of issues that are in the game. Um, it's a bit I don't like. Like I'll never be a big fan of fifty percent lords and all that. Now it's cool yeah. that you know it sounds like that meta doesn't abuse it. Um, but I'd hate to see one that did, you know, I don't want to turn up to a, you know, 2,500 point game and come, come up against Nagash or something like, no thanks. 
Well, that's no, they said no special characters, so that's oh, true. Just, yeah, it would just be your generic lords and heroes that are just like you have 1250 points in lords. Okay, seems dumb, but all right, yeah. So that's all that's going to do then is it's not going to stop. It's not going to change the like power level of lords in your army. Right. It's just going to mean more of them. That's what that is. So, mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. I guess it means you can take a star dragon prince and a level four of the same in the same army. But right, yeah, yeah. I don't know. But I'm what's sure. cool is we will get to that. Sportsmanship is a big part of this tournament too. So, but we we can get to that. Is that's what I love about it. So if someone takes twelve hundred and fifty points in lords. And they mm. bust open their characters at like as most OP as possible. Well, they're probably not going to get the best sportsmanship score. That's true. Yeah. So b- true. Before, before we get into that, <clears throat> there's one more house rule that I think is important we should mention, and that's that characters only ever take one wound from save the dice spells. Right. So your your dwellers, your pit shades, your you know, purple sun, you can't ever yeah. lose your. That's huge, actually. Yeah. Which I like a lot. Um, because when you just cast one spell and boom, there goes like a 300 point character plus mm-hmm. like two to 300 points of your unit. It's, it's not fun to put your models down, have them on the field for 10 minutes and then pick them up. Yeah. I, yeah so. I'm not mad at it. And it's still, yeah. it still doesn't take the point of those spells away in terms of getting rid of death stars because if you right. take an iron bus, you know, 18 iron guts, whatever, and then you got like a bruiser and a level four, whatever they're called, the butcher dude. Um, and then someone Slaughter purple suns there. it. Yeah, that's it. If someone then purple suns it, all right, cool. So your characters only took one wound each, but they have no unit. So the, the whole point of it still works. So yep. it's good. Yeah, I'm not mad at that at all. So as far as scoring for the tournament goes, we won't really get into the, the actual like playing points. But forty percent of your your score for this tournament is all from sportsmanship. Yeah, it's a good chunk. <clears throat> yeah, so um, it's very which is as it should be to be honest. And it's sort of it's one of it's one of those things like I hate the fact that we have to have a sportsmanship score in events, but half the time sportsmanship's just clash of personalities and not anyone trying to be you know like hard right. work or anything like that. But it's good to sort of have something that encourages fair play and, you know, even encouraging fair play before you even get to the event, you know, encouraging you to take a list that it's not going to ruin your opponent's day and give them, you know, mm-hmm. bad times. So, you know, I'm not mad at it. Yeah, I think it's important. I agree. But without without stuff like that, I mean, you'd have people that would just come in and crush people that are just coming in to have a good time. Yeah. Mm, yeah, it's a good point. So, um... As far as the three scenarios go, the first one is called Into the Breach. It is a battle line deployment. Into the Breach! <laughs> uh, six turns, so it's your standard battle line. <clears throat> and the special rules for the scenario are um, after deployment, you pick a piece of terrain in your in, in your enemy's deployment zone and whoever has the the most unit standards or battle standards within three inches of the terrain piece gets additional victory points yep um, <clears throat> so obviously that makes fast cav that can take banners a little bit stronger. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it seems to me like it'll force if you have a bunker unit then you're pretty much just going to put that directly across from your piece of terrain and you're just going to march right at it Yeah. and then kill whatever's in your way pretty much um, I think that could create some issues for like Warriors of Chaos armies or any small elite armies that don't have a lot of units with banners yeah <clears throat> Uh, or anybody who's particularly slow. So maybe like dwarves. vampire counts maybe would have a hard time. Dwarves, definitely dwarves. I didn't even think about that. Well, it can. Uh, but see, that's what I love about this scenario. It forces you to take things that most, not most armies, but it it takes you to kind of take a fluffier list. 
because all right, that means dwarfs probably they if they want to score that battle point, then they will take a unit of rangers with a banner in it. So they yeah. can like come out the back and you know disrupt like being in your rear and all that stuff. So that's what yeah. I like. Well, well, so, I see them so, take miners as well, which I really like. Miners, yeah, miners that's going right. into the yeah. breach of like whatever it is. That's cool. Yes. So here's the real kicker to this scenario, is that at the end of each phase. Wait, wait, wait. What's the rule called? Oh, the rule's called bring me everyone. There you go. So at the end of any phase, any core unit, and it has to be core, of 300 points or less, not including magic items or banners, I assume, right. that is either fleeing or below 50% strength may be removed from the battlefield at your discretion. It will cause panic checks and give victory points to your opponent, but a unit removed in this way is places a reinforcement in the remaining moves phase of your following turn. So, Nasty. as long as you're, you know, you can have a lot of core units that are, like, limited by the point limit and uh, reinforce your, yourself continuously within throughout the course of the game. So it's limiting hordes to some extent which i like oh yeah um, it forces you it doesn't force you but for this scenario honestly i think this the first mission and the special rules of the packet makes Bretonia amazing because you can take mm. a whole bunch of units of knights that are less than 300 points just charge them up the field and throw them away in this first scenario kill stuff die remove them bring them back next turn as reinforcements, full ready to go, charge again. It's just like an ending, unending wave of heavy armored knights. Well, they've got, they've got the speed to utilize that. So yeah. yeah. That's, that's and devastating really charge powerful. with them too. It's like, woo. Blue, yeah, do, you re- do you reckon that um, this is going to cause players to prioritize casualties onto your opponent's, special and rare troops so that they don't get that chance to bring them back well so it's only if they're under 50 percent or fleeing if i'm not if i'm right is that right under 50 percent or fleeing? okay um yes i would think it would make um armies want to shoot and target other things at least for this first scenario um but what it also forces like you said it goes it makes people not want to take a horde for their core troops. So you'll see a lot of 20 to 25, you know, elves or humans or what have you, but you won't see, um, you might not see a 40 man blob of spearmen, uh, at least for high elves or something, because you don't want to go over uh, 300 points. Yeah, I think people would target special and rare or a, a lot more for that scenario. Like, like when you, in your Bretonian example, like I can just picture like I don't know, cycle charging, and yep. a, you know, a unit of white lions or, uh, you know, grave guard just, and, and completely ignoring the core units. Um, yeah, I mean, it's 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 a really interesting mechanic, and I like it. Um, I can see some issues with it for sure. Anyone who's going. You know, who's got like lots of small core units, 300 points or less. So, just jogging my memory, you get the victory points if they decide to remove the unit. That's right, yeah. Yes, four victory points. Okay. Right. All right. So you're going to see some games with absolutely huge swings in victory points um, because of this mechanic. Um, if you come up against the gun line and they're just peppering your units, they don't even have to kill the unit to, you know, sort of make you think, ah. Oh, you know, I might get, I might just refresh it and start again. Like you only have to kill half the unit, and your opponent's already going to be thinking it's not going to make it to the other side. So yep. I'm going to, I'm going to take it off. So you give your opponent some points for free, and in your I mind agree. you're thinking I get my unit back for free, but you don't. You're paying for it in victory points, and you're then also back at the start of the board. So right. Well, yeah. Right. Okay. So this is where I'm thinking where it's a little. So if, if the enemy is shooting or casting magic at a whole bunch of my core, 
that means my structures on my radar are probably going to make it. So I could yeah, just true. replace my core. Um, because if I throw my core away, and let's say that my core has all the banners, then I yeah. can just boom, instantly put the banners back anywhere on the, my table edge, and I could put them near my um, my, my opponent's piece of special terrain that they, that they said is the objective. That's true. Um, but is, if you have, like, Warhounds or whatever, or like, I think those are, like, 50 points maybe. They're so yeah. fast, you're going to get up the field in one turn anyways. Because when mm -hmm. you come on as reinforcements, you get to move. So if you're using Bretonians or Elven Calvary, you start on the field, you put the back of your base up against the back, and then you get your move of, like, eight, nine inches. And the next turn, you can march or charge. Yeah. It, it's a big sacrifice. You're right. It's going to be a lot of... Um, a lot of thinking. And well, I can do is. it on your turn, too. Not even only mine. I can do it on your turn. Oh, really? At any, yeah. at any point. Okay. I mean, it's sort of, it will be interesting. And it will yeah. give people pause for thought as to charging straight at your terrain piece because they know, okay, well, I could end up with just a big swarm of core things just jumping on my expensive unit turn two or whatever it is. You know, it's, um, right. you know, it's interesting. So I like it, though. I'd be keen to see how it goes. And I think you actually get extra battle points if you do that. I sacrifice my extra points for the three battle points too, and that's, I just don't remember that. So victory points or like um, battle points for like the, the tournament? So battle points for a uh, tournament. So I think it's still using victory uh, points for who wins, loses. But yeah. then it's using like battle point. I think if you win, this scenario you get 15. Yep. Draw might be 10 and a loss is 5, something like that. Okay. If you're doing the objective in the scenario, you get extra battle points. So victory points yeah, like is the number of battle points. Yeah. I like that, you know, you're encouraged to play the narrative and play the scenario. Though. That's good. Right. Yeah, I'm trying to think, because like, that, that scenario, it is just going to really favor some armies over others. Like, anything that's got cavalry as core is going to love it. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, so I'm trying to think what that is. I mean, it's obviously Britannians, Hales can do it. Um, I don't even know. There'd be a bunch of armies, I guess, but those are the two that jump to mind. Yeah, Empire, obviously. Like with Marauders. Oh, yeah, good. Marauders. I didn't think of those. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're, I mean, they. they're letting people use Kislev. Kislev can do it. That'd be good. Yeah. That might be yeah. it. Yeah. Although I find I find it funny that um you can't take any special characters, but you can take the Kislev army, but take away their special <laughs> characters and that's half the book. Like, oh well. Alright, so let's um let's get into the second scenario. Yeah, man. Uh the second scenario is called The Vortex Hungers. Ooh. This is a <clears throat> blood and glory scenario. So that's the one where you lose immediately once you drop below so many fortitude points. Yeah. So I I asked this and it, that is not actually they're so they're playing the deployment for blood and glory, but they're not using the standard thing. Okay. Uh, okay. So there's no fortitude. I think that's what it's called. There's no yeah. army fortitude. So the yep. deployment for this one is uh, it's like battle line except tighter deployment from the sides, right? You're more condensed uh, in the middle of the field, I think. Yeah, so it's 12 inches. Your deployment is 12 inches from each side, and it's 15 inches up instead of just 12. Yeah. Okay. So, special rules. The first one is called, it is out of control. Uh, when casting a spell, double sixes still cause irresistible will force a miscast. But double ones are also uh, will also cause a miscast. Yep. If the spell is cast with irresistible force, any attempt may still be made to dispel using dispel dice, but it will only succeed on double sixes. Yeah. Interesting. So that's I like that a lot. So if I roll, let's say I roll <clears throat> casting value of a twenty, I don't roll any box cards, but I roll two snake eyes. Boom, miscast. So it makes rolling yep. a lot of dice uh, even more deadly. 
Yeah. I mean, that's kind of how it's just how it was in six and seventh, wasn't it? Like double yep. ones was a miscast, yeah. That's right. Yeah. But this this doesn't say that double ones trump double sixes. So. You mean if you oh, roll so two sixes and two split ones, either, either or. Yeah, if you roll two, two sixes and two ones, the spell still goes off, but you miscast. Yeah. And you that, miscast twice. Yeah. That I don't know. I'm not sure if they're rolling it as two miscasts, because that's, that's just mean. If it's two miscasts <laughs> like that, that's, that's brutal. I just wouldn't take a wizard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but see, you're, you're going to like the next special rule. Oh, All but right. before you get to that one, so the... The second part of that special rule that you just read. So if you roll box cars, uh, I can also use my dispel dice. And if I roll box cars, I get rid of your your irresistibly force forcibly cast spell. So my dispel usually you can't dispel an irresistible force, but here you mm. can, which is cool. I like that. Yeah, I don't mind that. I mean, does it have like a sort of like? You know, like a Yahtzee sort of feel to it. Like, it's just like I've got like straight sixes, but you only got two sixes, so I win. Like, how's it work? Is it just? No, it's just if you roll two sixes to cast, and I roll at least two sixes to uh, dispel, it's gone. Yeah, sweet. Yeah. Interesting. I, I like that you you still have a chance to fish for sixes to dispel something that's irresistibly irresistibly cast. I do like. Yeah. That. I, I don't know. I can be cynical about it either way. I guess it's like. Sometimes, like, people, like, trying to push a spell through, they don't really have the dice to do it or the wizard level to do it, but they're like, I'll oh, just hope for the double six and just get it off anyway. And then, you know, the same sort of thing with dispelling as well. It's like, oh, I cast this on a 30 with no, you know, irresistible. It's like, yeah, I'm a level one wizard and I've got two dice and I'll just hope for double six and then stop it. Like, like yeah. so you can go either way with it. But I hate it when... If you're like saving your dice for like the spell, you know they're gonna try and get off, and they mm. roll box cars on it, and you're sitting on like six dice, and you're just like, oh. Like, but now you can at least, you know, yeah, it's the worst. But now you at least have a chance. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And at least right. you still got a roll for it, so you know your opponent gets his chance still as well. Right. Right. So the the next special rule is. Call is over nine thousand. <laughs> um, any damaging spell is cast with plus one strength or causes plus one d6 hits as applicable. Hexes or augments that do not do damage last an extra turn. Remains in play spells may not be dispelled in the magic phase immediately following its initial casting. And then any army specific lores, uh, Plague of Rust, Final Transmutation, Dwellers, Pit of Shades, Spirit Leech, Purple Sun are not affected. Yeah, uh, mean. Mm. Like mm. fine. Mean but fine. So this is, it makes all of your direct damage spells and your magic missiles much stronger. And, you know, you're casting Strength 5 Fireballs. Um, <laughs> Oh, uh, I did. I clarified this with the TO. So if it is like a fireball or if it's a magic missile that does, let's say it has 2d6 strength 4 hits, you do not get to choose. It's just an extra d6. So if it's 2d6 strength 4, now it's just 3d6 strength 4. Um, the other thing was, um, so... Uh, what's it like? Fulminating flame cage. I think that's the fire one. Like every model unit takes a strength four hit. Yeah. That right. So now it's just strength five. So. Okay. So, yeah, so, so you so, don't get to choose. It's either it's. If yeah. It's, if your spell has a d6 roll and a strength roll, it's just a d6 addition. But if it's just something that only has a strength, like you're just hit by a strength four hit, now it's just a strength five hit. Okay. That turns it a little bit back. Yeah. yeah. Um, then your hexes and your augments, that they last an extra turn. So, like, I don't know. Your wisdoms will be in, in play for two turns. You don't have to recast it. Your, um, I don't know, Melkos, yeah. my, my asthma will be in effect. You, you, know, you know what I'm going to say. Curse the banner here, man. Oh, jeez. What'd you say? Curse of Anra here. Uh, oh yeah. Oh. That just 
that's gross. Skip, just, you know, skip a turn. Do not pass, guys. You know, not play two hundred dollars. Like, nah. Yeah. Just that unit's just doing nothing. Yeah, that does suck. Uh, Luckily, I have that spell on my list. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Or, uh, uh, I'd like a um, flesh to stone. You know, for two turns, you get plus four toughness if it's boosted. Mm. Well, but, that that is even more possible, Blue, because. If you can't, re the spell remains in play spells after they've been cast the following turn. That means yep. that your throne of vines is going to be a spell. Exactly. Oh. Or, just so uh, many uh, so much. Oh. Some pretty intense combos there. Gosh. There is some really crazy combos you can do in that scenario. Yeah, you're going to have to like report back after this event and just see like <laughs> what was the wildest <laughs> thing you saw from that <laughs> Oh, man, I think the mind, the mind boggles is going to be some serious stuff going on. Oh, think of like Occam's Mind Razor or something. That's just like for two turns, your leader, your strength age, just like obliterating stuff. Just gross stuff. Yeah. Uh, but I do plan to be recording. Um, I don't know how long my throne will last, but I do plan to record at least one game. So, Sweet. That'll be awesome, man. Um, okay. So once we get Mario, I'll ask um, which one. Uh, should definitely be recorded, but uh, hopefully I can record too. Are there any other, um, anything else in that scenario, Kyle? No, that's it. It's just, okay. it makes magic super strong and super risky. Yeah. Cool. Um, so the, the third scenario is called Finish the Fight. It's a dawn attack scenario. Um, I'm sorry, dawn attack deployment. Um, the special rules are, where are they? Um, at the beginning of each game turn, not the beginning of each player turn, one player rolls an artillery dice, multiplies the result by three to determine line of sight distance. Uh, oh. so if you roll a six on an artillery die, your, every unit can see 18 inches. Um, you roll a misfire, that means you have normal sight distance. No targets may be declared past your sight distance, uh, but war machines that can fire indirectly still can. Okay. So, Blue, we, we actually played this scenario. Yes. In a practice game for you. This was a really impactful. I uh, bet it is. Little, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Because I know you. the first thing that you think about is, like, shooting, and it's and very charging. interesting. Yeah, but the charge. one thing is that you can't charge. Yeah. You're just stuck there. Like, if you roll a two, everything can only see six inches. So it's just like, wow. That is, yeah, that's that's massive. Yeah. And then the, the other special rule is, for he today that sheds his blood with me. Um, the unit that your general is deployed in will be designated as their bodyguard. Every model in that unit gains plus one weapon skill and ballistic skill. Their standard counts as plus two for combat resolution and has no maximum rank bonus for combat res. No. <laughs> yeah. but, but you can't claim steadfast or stubborn. Oh, that's different. Yes, big. Big. So... That makes you kind of want to take a horde, and or just like yeah. five by ten. Makes makes get like nine rank. Yeah. Makes uh, I mean, uh, like Skaven pushing a screaming bell amazing. Yes, but only for that scenario. See the other scenario. Yeah, they get hurt. that's true. So that's what's that's cool. True. Like so which scenario do you want to do best in? So with this tournament, is it like a one list for the whole day sort of thing, or is it multiple lists? How's it? How are they organizing it? Uh, it's one list. So you're playing one list throughout mm. the whole tournament. So that's that makes it tricky because you've got to yeah. design this with all three in mind. So it's like, what do you do? Do you have like lots of smaller units for the first scenario, or do you have like a big brick of something nasty for that last one, like and benefit from all the bonuses? Like, oof, that's that's yeah, that's tricky. Yeah, that's so tricky. I mean, what I'd be, what I'd be doing if I was playing to be like cheesy, 
um, whoever my general was, he'd have a big brick of white lions to sit with, so he doesn't care about losing stubborns, and he's just going to have rank bonus after rank bonus, and he's going to chop everyone to bits, and it'll be unstoppable. So, DTA, that's a great segue into the next part of the, the show. We're going to talk about Blue's List. Nice. Woo-hoo. Blue, I've got your list right here in front of me, so let's just go through it, and you can tell us why you're bringing the units you're bringing and how you plan on playing each scenario. Okay. Um, so we'll start with your lords and just go through it. Uh, so you brought a level four on a steed with yep. the Lord of Life, a bow, and the Acorn of Ages. The Acorn of Ages! I should, I should also lead this off by saying that you're playing Wood Elves. <laughs> yes, that's, that might be a good one. I think with the acorn, they might know. Yeah, yeah. it's a giveaway. I love the acorn. Yeah, love dude, plant that, plant that seed. Yeah. So oh, do you want me to tell you why, why I'm taking it? Like, for each unit you say, you're going to go through the whole list. You tell me. Doesn't matter. Uh, let's go through the list, and then yeah, we'll hear your yeah. sort of um, what okay. the plan is. Go for it. Yeah. So then, then we've got a Glade Captain with the Hail of Doom Arrow, Charmed Shield, Obsidian Trinket, Arcane Botkins, a Spear, and he's the BSB on an Elven Steed. Yep. We have a level one wizard with the Lore of Fire. Burn, baby. And a Dispel Scroll. You've got a Way Stalker with the Bow of Loren. You've got nice. not one, but two units of 20 Eternal Guard with full command. This guy knows what he's doing. One has the standard of discipline, and one has the gleaming pennant. Yep. You've got five Glade Riders with a standard. Uh-huh. Interesting enough, though, no musician. Hmm, interesting. Not needed. It's fine. Uh, two units of five scouts with hagbang tips. Those are the poison ones. Yep. Perfect. Five sisters of the thorn. Yeah. No, no command. Six tree ken. Six wild riders with the banner of swiftness. A great eagle. One tree man with the strangle root upgrade. And five way watchers. That's right. Twenty five hundred points on the dot. On the dot, boys. Nice. So no, I can not, like it. not leaving any points out there. No, so that's good. So let's go through it. Let's start at the top and tell us what you're thinking with each pick. So okay. why? So your your level four lord. Tell us about what why lore of life. Why is it on a steed? Uh. Lore of Life seems, I think Lore of Life is pretty self-explanatory for Wood Elves. Um, mm-hmm. I know they get the option of high magic and dark magic, but if I'm taking the Acorn of Ages, which is 100 and freaking, 100 freaking points, that means she has no protection. She has no ward save. She gets a yep. 6-up armor for being mounted. So she has easy pickings for a lot of things. Yep. Um, so she has no miscast protection, nothing like that. So I've always loved Lore of Life when it comes to Wood Elves. Um, I've always run it. Um, well, except for obviously previous editions when they only when they have their own lore, but uh, Lord of Life uh, to heal my troops, to keep the Eternal Guard around, to make toughness uh, seven elves or to make toughness um, nine treekin. Every spell is going to be uh, healing wounds on either the treekin or the tree man or even my BSB if he's close enough. Um, but that is my plan for her. She actually well, that's the reason why I took her. Her plan on the seed is to go inside the um, Sisters of the Thorn, uh, just for that four of ward protection uh, that they will be able to soak up wounds for her. Um, And I love being able to, later in the game, when you can just march a hero 18 inches and cast spells, uh, it's just really strong because she's fast cavalry. Um, Yeah. I just like the mobility. Um, Later in the game, mobility really comes into play. And for Wood Elves, it's really all about mobility and going around your enemies and stuff like that. Yeah. It's just, that's right. my favorite. I usually keep her on foot, but I'm putting her in a Sister of the Thorn, so we're, we're doing it. Yeah, look, I completely agree with uh, with your choices there. Like, um, 
you know, like I don't have many of my Wood Elf Cavalry models back from Renee yet. He's still painting them, but when I get them back, that's something I'm keen to try out. Like nice. I found Lord of Life. I haven't used my Wood Elf Wood Elves in many games, but, but um, even a block of twenty Eternal Guard, if you just keep pumping either the Earth Blood or the Flesh to Stone on them, they just don't go anywhere ever. They're yep. just so just stalwart. It's fantastic. Don't so if you got two agree. blocks of twenty, that gives you so, so such a strong battle line. Um, you yeah, know, so that's that's going to be really good. And I also agree with you with um, High Magic not being the best for Wood Elves purely because the, everything High Magic can do. They can more or less just do with units from their book anyway, like um, like the, yeah. the Magic Missile. They've got amazing range threat. They don't need to worry about Magic Missiles. Um, you know, the Walk Between Worlds, which is a big selling point of High Magic, they have magic items that can do that, and especially if you're taking Acorn. Like, you know, right. you'll, you can teleport the a unit down. down to. Yeah. yeah, that's the one, man. Um, you know, so they've got options in that sense. The only time I would consider High Magic over... Um, over life or whatever is if the wood elves um version of high magic had the lore attribute that the high elves do if they could get the plus one ward save like imagine putting yeah. that on tree and tree can dryads like that'd be incredible that's when i, I do it but you know without that it's just it's just not as good so blue, so blue what's the thinking behind the acorn of ages is it just for board control oh 100 percent for board control so i'm not running the moonstone but what I love about the acorn, I hope I get at least two trees, obviously D3. So what else? You get a tree, you get a forest, and then you get for the acorn, it's an additional D3. Now, the acorn can... Is it D3 um, plus one? No, it's just D3. That would be oh, disgusting okay. if it was D3 plus one. Um, yeah. I wish. I mean, please. For 100 points, it probably should be. Um, yeah, I know. But the point of the trees is to make them all venom thickets and yep. just put them right in front of your deployment zone. Because they count as dangerous, so everything you have is going to have to walk through dangerous terrain, um, yep. which just it almost always makes its points back unless I only get like one tree. But if yep. I get two trees and I put them in a front of your horde unit of like 30, 40 guys, or if you have a unit of cavalry or even chariots or anything, it's dangerous terrain. Because uh, you you can put them anywhere in your half of the table. Is that right? Uh. No, that's so just you... my wood. I can put those trees anywhere. Oh, okay. I'm going to have to yep. look that up again because I can't remember off the top of my head. But yep. I can put – I know the one that I choose, like the one you automatically get uh, for being yep. wood elves, you can put it anywhere in your table half. But mm. I believe the acorn you can put in anywhere on the field, which is why I love it. But they do yep. scatter 2d6. So you put them down and they scatter 2d6. Yeah. Um, I think I rolled 1d6 in the bat rep because I read 2d6 later and I was like, crap. But it's it's 2d6 <laughs> they scatter. Unless you get a direct hit, well, then there you go. Yeah, but yeah, nice. just the dangerous terrain, but I'm thinking it's so, it's gross. Yeah, and the one, I, I usually <laughs> use a tree, a tr a tree in ancient when I run my wood elves, but um, I'm really coming around to the idea of the um, of the, the elf wizard purely for the magic points allowance so I can take the acorn because like after you know having to think about it like it's so beneficial to the wood elves like um i mean the only annoying thing about it is it just means you gotta pay more trees but you know that's right yeah you know, part and parcel but um yeah dude gives you a lot of I'm, I'm thinking about this event you're going to um you know um the one with the wild magic you could turn them all into blood forests and just absolutely decimate things um yep. or the one the one with um the, the first one where you've got a um you know, pick an opponent's piece of terrain or whatever. You could just surround it with trees or whatever you want to do. Um, and even the last one, um, you know, you could you could definitely find some uses for it there. So, you know, it's, it's just like a mobile buff bunker for your army. It's great. So I love the Blood Forest. That's the one that you cast at a – if the unit's in it, it takes additional, like, D6 strength 4, right? That's right, yeah. So if you did – uh, let's say you make it the Blood Forest, and then you cast, you know, in the second scenario, I believe it is, where they get the, uh, the extra D6. So mm -hmm. you just cast, like, Awakening of the Wood. That makes Awakening of the Wood, like, kind of decent. Because now yeah. it's 2D6. If you have Throne of Vines up, it's 2D6 strength 6 hits, plus a D6 yeah. strength 4. So no nothing is going to 
2d6 strength six is gonna bounce off nothing. That is gonna put some wounds on anything. Yeah, dude. Like, so, but who knows? Yeah, yeah. Like, we'll Gross. See you later. But I think and, if I had to choose. I would probably skip the Blood Forest only because the dangerous terrain. I don't mm. know. It's just so good. It's so good. Oh, it's the, it's the Venom thing. I think the only downfall with that is you do have to um, just just be careful where you um, where you deploy them. Like, because if you're using them so that your opponent's got to move through them to come to you, so that he you know takes the dangerous terrain test, you don't want it so that he then benefits from the poison attacks. You just got to sort of position them right. Um, which can be a little bit tricky because um, otherwise he's going to like get into contact with you and if half of his units in the forest, he's then got poison. So right. it can be a little oh, bit of a... Sort I of will let you know. Game. I'm putting them at like at the front of his deployment zone. No. I'm not going to him. He's coming to me. He's, <laughs> he's crazy. Unless he's a gun line, I am not going to him. He is well, coming to that tree. He's coming to those wounds. If he is a gun line, you stick it right in front of all his... You yeah, know, right. like, Range shit, mate. That's, that's going to be really good. That'll yep. stop him from, you know, little Nagas ballistics here and all the rest. So that's, yeah. I can't believe I've never thought of using that before. That's really good. I'm going to have to give that it's a try. Fun. It's Trixie, yeah. Trixie Elf stuff. Trixie Elf stuff. Yeah, man. So let, let's get into uh, this BSB blue. I think, it, I mean, it's kind of self explanatory, I think, what you're trying to do with them. Um, Hail Doom Arrow, Charm Shield, Obsidian Shrinket. Arcane Botkins. Uh, that's the no armor stage one? Uh, it's just minus three. Minus Make three. Okay. Minus. Uh, you gave him a spear and a steed. So is he going to be with the Sisters of the Thorn or Wild Riders or Glade Riders or what? So that, that really just depends on what I'm fighting, uh, what my opponent has. If my opponent is like heavy shooting, um, well, if the, my opponent is heavy magic and I'm expecting a lot of to take a lot of magic, like magic missiles, I might put. It just really depends, because um, obviously with that obsidian trinket, he buffs the ward save earth magic uh, spells by one. So that means the sisters of the thorn would have a three up, and then the wild riders will have a five up. Uh, my wild riders, they are a glass cannon, so yeah, they have a four up, six up, which is like one of the best saves you can get in wood elves. Um, but man, they hit like a ton of bricks. They each have three strength five attacks, but we can get to that later. Um, he is there to hail a doom error or something. Uh, I had like 15, 20 points left over. So I figured give him MR one to buff the unit and the charm shield is nice because if I'm out in the open, if I have to like leave the sisters or something and I get shot by a cannonball or something, who knows, a magic missile, the first hit disregarded on two plus. So that's really good. And I had a couple points, so I gave him the Arcane Botkins. He's BS, he's BS six or seven, so hitting hitting really easily. Uh, he's got like a forty two percent chance to cause a minus three armor save on a toughness three thing. So that's pretty good to cause a wound. Forty two percent chance, pretty much yeah. kill like a, a model. And who was the other one I gave him? Uh, oh, I gave him a spear. So just so he'll have armor piercing and plus one strength on the charge. He's not a big armor save or anything, but he will have three strength, five armor piercing, so on the charge, which is pretty good. Three roll in the hit, strength five, not bad. It would be, uh, I, I don't know a whole lot about the Wood Elf book, but I'm going to assume that the Hail of Doom arrow does not stack with Arcane Botkins, right? Correct. Yeah, yeah that does not. That would be, that would be amazing. Yes, it would. <laughs> Imagine Just, that with Hagbane tips or something. Turn no, yeah, I would probably do Hagman or something instead. Yep. Yes. But yep. it does do 3d6 strength 4 armor piercing shots. One use only. Yeah. It's nothing to sniff at. No. For 30 points, it is amazing. It's been, it's been great in like every edition of the Wood Elf book. It's, you know, yep. it's, it's, yeah. it's been a staple for a long time. It's my favorite magic item in the whole game. Yeah. The whole it's, it's just cool. I yep. just love the idea of it. Just like twanging off like this one arrow that like splits into a million like it's cool yeah i don't know in my bad in the bad reps i always do a even in my regular games i always just do a cool little i like to do it pretending like i'm actually shooting the thing it's yeah, fun like a, little, like a little legless pose pretty much yeah i love it love it so and i get into with it. the wild riders too because he's 
he has just as many attacks as the Wild Riders, and he also strength five armor piercing. So, just yeah, uh, true. a couple extra attacks with him. So that's that's my first of him. He's going to be moving around, trying to keep the the standard of discipline Eternal Guard uh, within twelve. So, um, yep. he gets that reroll on leadership ten. Nice. So so let's get into this uh, this level one you brought with the lore of fire. Okay. Why lore of fire? So I decided lore of fire because I'll probably be taking fireball every time. I know fireball is really anti wood elf, kind of. Yeah, sure. But the reason is is for the magic phase. So mm. <laughs> sorry, I do expect to fight some regen. Um, armies like like a nasty bunker with the regen so during the magic phase i shoot it with the lore of fire and then everything else that i cast magic at it will ignore the regen um, so if i do awakening of the wood or if i have shield of thorns off in a unit um and they feel like charging well i don't either way you know that wouldn't work really well, you can, I don't know. You'll be able to shoot without having to worry about reach out. Pretty much, which is just a waking up the wood, and um, I forgot Shield of Thorns wouldn't work because I won't have anything in combat with them. Ah, eh, well. Well, you might at some point. I, I don't know. Who knows? Oh, look, based on that second scenario, you never know. It actually might be kind of useful. But don't yeah. forget with Fireball, even though you're only level one, you got three versions of casting on that spell, so you can actually you can pump spells out like you're a level four, you know. It's like there's three d six strength five shots for this, you know. No, it would go to like go to four d six strength four. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. There's your and the there's horde mitigation is now two d six. So on a five, a casting of a five, it's two d six strength four, which I think yeah, is that's. That's impressive. Well, that's just a really good way to draw out your opponent's dice because he can't let that go if you put that in against like fast cab or whatever. I agree. You know, so it's pretty good. The like shadow or Lord Beast, but Lord Beast. I mean, it's nice to get with the rod form, but it it takes a ten, and I'm only level one, so I was like, well, what what lords have really cheap signature spells? Yep. Fireball, uh, shadow. Or sorry, fire, shadow, and I can't remember. I think there was a third one. I don't remember what it was, but shadow also. It's um, my ass. Heavens box. isn't too bad. Maybe yeah, that might be like six or seven or something. Yeah. Uh, but Are that's there... why I chose. Yeah. And just a scroll, Look, that's Daddy. that's what I found when I took what else in my last game. I had like a big horde of dryads. But a level one beast just for wizens in there. I was thinking I was going to be you know king of the world. Nah, it just doesn't happen. Like. <laughs> yeah, you just, you got to show a nine on the dice. dice and play, oh, okay. Yeah. So it ends up a pretty big investment. So, blue. Are there any spells besides fireball and the lore of fire that you would swap out if you rolled it up? Like, would you ever take piercing bolts or <laughs> flaming sword? <laughs> <laughs> yes, flaming sword would be cool. A rune. Um, that's what. Is it plus one to hit? Right? And yeah. flaming attack? Plus oh, one plus to one win. to win. Okay. Plus, plus one to win, yeah. And uh, gives you flaming attacks. Flaming and magical, I think it might have been. Or just yeah. flaming. I can't remember. Well, plus I one to win for elves is fantastic. It's it's okay. Um, on the tree menu, or the tree candy would look cool. Uh, on the eternal guard, I mean... Yeah, I'm strength three, so I need fives. I need fours to win strength or toughness four models. But uh, the eternal guard aren't really meant to do that. It's at least for my list. Um, if I had some wildwood rangers or something, yeah, that'd be nasty. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. I think mostly my army is going to try and kill your fast skirmishing units and then just surround you at all at all times. Yep, uh, sounds good. Pin them in place with the eternal guard. Probably, but Dude, I, by the way, I've been sliding all over this road, and, you know, my, my car is, like, you know, you know when it flashes slip? It, like, yeah. I've, it's been doing that this whole way. This is not a good oh, road. Jesus. Woo! 81. Oh, yeah. A lot of big trucks next to me, too. It's great. Super <laughs> safe. Jesus. What are we talking about? Right. Uh, that was a level one. Is that all your characters? 
nope, I got one more. I have the waist oh, offer. Cool. Oh, yeah, nice, nice. With the bow of Lauren, Loren, whatever. Obviously, uh, he's just there to snipe. He's just sniping characters out. Yep. Uh, could take out standards, could take out BSBs. So if you took a, if you have a toughness three BSB without a good ward save, that he's is that guy's that. target. Oh yeah, he yeah. is. Like you, you only have a two up armor, prime target. Um, now the reason well, I, I was taking lore of beast on my level one, because if you get the savage beast of Horus, or I can't remember the savage beast of something, you get three extra attacks. Which means yeah, I knew, I knew you were going to say that. Like, yeah. double check for me, because I, I had the exact same thought, but I have a horrible feeling they FAQ'd it, that it's just base oh. attacks on profile for both, Lauren. It's, it's gross. So I did it, I think I did it against Kyle. I was shooting five, was it five? Yeah, five sniper flats that were ignoring our yeah, man, it's crazy. I mean, Sniper's such a good rule, but you never see it. Like, when the rule book drops and you're reading through the special rules and I read Sniper, I'm like, yeah, dude, this is going to change so much. And then there's, like, three units in the game have it or something stupid. It's like, it just never happens. Like, I, I think the Waystalker is probably the best unit in the game that make, like, takes advantage of it. Yeah, oh, big time. I mean, it's, what else has it? I know, I know, man eaters can get it as one of their selected rules. Right. And then um, the Hawkland Long Rifle. Is there anything else? Those are the only three that I know. Yeah, those are yeah. the ones that come to mind. I'm sure there's probably somebody out there who is going to be like, "Oh no, you guys are wrong." But those are the only. But uh, Giselles don't have it, right? Escape and Gisellers or whatever. No, no, because they're they're from a they're they're from before the book anyway, so they would have had maybe a, a version of it. I don't know, but. Who knows? But that's what he's there for. I was thinking about giving him the charm shield, uh, mm. just so if he's running around by himself, he can you yep. know, dodge a cannonball, hopefully. Uh, but I gave it to the BSB. I figured the BSB is more important. So yeah. both, the, uh, the waste offer, you know, he's cool, but he could not do anything for the entire game. So nah. BSB is definitely important. He's a nice distraction. That's what he is. Yeah. That's true. Look, he's one of those things. He's either go, he's gonna go and like kill a bunch of like level one or two wizards, or he's just gonna catch a fireball turn one. You just don't know. Yep. <laughs> it could go either way. But I'm, I could even, I could start him in a unit. You know, I could put him in the unit of Reformal Guard. True. If I was really true. Yeah. So it's you know, I could. What, what, what nothing stopping me. Yeah, that's a good point. So, so let's get into your core, Blue. Let's talk about why you brought. Two Eternal Guard and a Glade Rider unit. <clears throat> okay. The first uh, thing that comes to mind is that all of your cores less than 300 points. Yes, for, sir. Uh, for that scenario, the first scenario. Yes. Um, I like it. Now, so the what do you? I mean, what Glade, uh, what Eternal Guard do in the game is really self-explanatory since they're like a great an anvil unit. Right. What um, what are you planning on doing with them in the scenarios? Uh, in the first scenario, uh, it really just depends on what I'm playing against, but I could throw them up uh, really nearly and just chuck them out there and then hold down a unit for three or four turns of combat. Uh, they can't soak up too much damage. Uh, you still have to kill. They're only 20 toughness group models with the six up armor save, so they're easy to kill. But you got to kill every last one, so they're going to last at least two rounds of combat, even against a horde, um, mm. unless I fail leadership test, of course. Um, I find the big advantage also is the weapon skill five that they come with. Yes. It just stops a lot of things from hitting them on threes, um, which is a big deterrent. Mm -hmm. And you know, like. You know, their armor saves nothing to write home about. You know, it's a shield and a t-shirt, but um, at the oh, end I of the day... I need to get the shield. Yeah, oh, really? You yeah, just got right out of there. Just laid on... Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Dude, the look, spears. I agree with you. After having used them, like, I did not pass any armor saves with them, so I don't know why I paid the point. Um, you yeah. know, you, you keep them alive with Laura Life, and you rely on the stubborn leadership 9 or 10 if you give them the banner. Like, it's so good. I mean, they literally do what it says on the tin. Like, they eternally guard stuff. They just do not move. It's fantastic. Weapon skill 5, strength 3, armor piercing, always strike first. Um, 
the first unit, yep, leadership 10. I'm going to try and keep within the BSB, at least for a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm re-rolling leadership 10, which is so good. I like uh, throwing them in a forest as well, mm -hmm. because they're still oh, yeah. open, so it doesn't matter. Your opponent charges in, loses his rank bonuses, etc. cetera, gets disrupted. You'll get him re-roll ones to wound as well, because you're in a forest and you're a wood elf. And if I'm the Venom Thicket, he yeah. charges, has to charge too dangerous, and I get yep. poison attacks. Yep, it becomes you, you got to stack it. Like it, it becomes really, really tasty, really quickly. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, I, that's why I like the Wood Elf book. There's lots of really good synergies. Um, right. It's just knowing how to use them. It does take a while to learn. Wood Elves are definitely a really hard um, army to play because yep. a lot of hard hitting, somewhat hard hitting stuff. But man, you don't have armor saves or nothing. Mm. Um, okay, so what else? Uh, the first yeah. scenario. Drill, they're, I'm not sure. It depends. I could just keep them in my personal force that I get to start with and sit them in there. But I have two units, so I could throw one up towards their objective. And if it dies, I can just put it back so then I have two on mine. Um, but that's why I give the other one a green pendant. So it can run around by itself. Because there will yep. be a 59 re-rolling the first nice. test, um, which is really nice. Um that's, that's the point of those two. In the other two scenarios, it's just hold the line as much as possible. Maybe I get some flank charges with Wild Riders or with Treekin, all that good stuff. Because uh, like if disruption's a thing, well, then let's do it. Yeah, no, that's cool, and man. Then, Look, I've come around to you. Uh, what was the other one? Like... You brought a, it's the Glade Riders with the standard. That's right. Okay. So their purpose, I did have a, uh, I did give them Hagbane at first. But I don't think I'll see too much artillery. Um, maybe not like four pieces in an army. Maybe one or two, which is fine. Uh, but I have some poison scouts to hopefully handle at least one piece. Mm. But the Glade Riders, I gave them a standard for that first scenario to try and grab that. Because they, they have to ambush. I can't just start them on the field, which yeah. I hate. I wish you could choose. So yeah. I have to bring them on as ambush. So they will pretty much... if. The pieces of terrain I select is on their corner in the back, and they're going on the side of the... Either way, I'm coming on your deployment zone. Yeah. Uh, and if they die, I can just bring them right back. Now, I don't... It hasn't been clarified if... No, actually it was. If they die, and I, or they have one left, and I pull them off the board, they do have to start on my deployment, uh, my table edge. So I can't bring them back to ambushers twice. Okay. Right, okay. Out there. Right, that would be yeah. abusive. That'd be really useful. <laughs> really would. Okay. So, do you want to talk about your scouts at all? Uh, sure. They're pretty much just, if you get in the way, if you have a monster, that's what they're targeting because most monsters don't have better than a 4-up save. So, with poison armor piercing attacks, you'll hopefully have a 5-up, unless I'm mm. fighting a mana core with a 4-up 4-up, which is disgusting. <laughs> uh, uh, what else? Uh, they're pretty much just aiming for monsters and anything War machines, yeah. that a lot of stuff. But they're just going to be harassed the whole time. Redirect charges, all that good stuff. Okay. Uh, how about your Sisters of the Thorn? They're a good base to hold my characters. So my BSB and my level 4 might start in there. It really just depends on what I'm fighting. Um, but with that four up ward save to just give to those, to both of those, well, it's like, take, it's five wounds with a four up save, which is really good. And they get the curse of Enra here, which is a nasty spell. And then I have, uh, so that also gives me two shield of thorns. So I can cast it on both the Charles Guard units or who knows on a tree can if I really wanted to. Or, yep. But pretty much just the curse is what that, what the sisters are used for. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much do fire the locks, but worse. Is, is there any reason you did not bring a standard in that unit? Is uh, it because yeah. you, you really don't want... You, you plan on playing defensively with them? Yeah, they will be super defensive. They're pretty much just going to be uh, in the backfield most of the time casting and giving, uh, like like I said, the characters uh, extra wounds for a ward save. But yeah, they won't be running around too much until late game because they're not very good. Uh, in close combat, their shooting is okay. They have five range 12 poison javelins. Whoop-de-doo. 
Um, yeah. But their steeds are they're elk, the I guess they're deer, antelope, something like that. At least they're strength four, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah. But they're not. Yeah, they're not very good in combat. They're pretty much there as a support unit. Yeah. So you, yeah, standard, you take them purely because you automatically get curse. Okay. What about um, your six tree kin? Oh, uh, the tree kin I like. Um, I've always liked tree kin. I usually like in bigger units, but with this scenario, I just figured I would take one unit of pretty much everything. Um, and I, I really don't like dryads. For the game that I played with um, Kyle, where I it was like 64 attacks, and I only did one wound to like one character. Uh, dreadful. Um, even when I was like poison and rolling once to wound, I just like did no damage. Yeah. So I like tree kin. Oh, okay. They're five. They're the same points as a uh, an iron gut, which is the ogre with a a great weapon. They're pretty much the same points. But I get toughness five. I get a four up armor, a six up ward. Um, they're a good. They're another good anvil unit for what else other than um, eternal guard. I liked them when they were strength five, but they dropped twenty points, so I can't complain. Yeah. Now hopefully they hit the flank of something. You know, eternal guard holding the line, and then tree can come on the side and disrupt you or something. I could even win a couple combats. <laughs> all right so, uh so then you go from all of your anvils to like one of the best hammers in fantasy and that is your wild riders yes so uh, you, you were talking about them a little bit earlier um and they you put the banner of swiftness on them right they need the charge they really need the charge oh yeah uh so their, their point is obviously they can charge a monster and easily put four wounds on it. Um, but on average, it's like three wounds if you're charging a toughness six one, if I'm not mistaken. So each wild rider on the charge has three strength five, weapon skill five, armor piercing attacks. So against monsters, you will be rerolling the hit, most likely, and you're needing maybe fives to win. Yep. And they, they're just doing damage. It's just a lot of strength five. It's minus three to your save at initiative five. They can just hurt. They have a four up, six up with shields. Um, and even the horses. So what's cool about the steeds of Kurnus, they are strength four, just like the um, the Sisters of the Thorn uh, cavalry. But the best thing about them is they, the horses themselves get frenzy. Nice. So they have two strength four attacks apiece just on the horses. So you're sending in on the charge three strength five attacks and two strength four attacks per model. Yeah, that's wow. a lot of fucking attacks for a widow. Yeah, they're so, scared. Renee okay. needs to hurry up and paint mine. <laughs> yeah, but they are they are a prime target for magic missiles and all that other mm. stuff. So. So do you find do you find with them blue like you you often better to sort of hide them and wait for that late game charge where they can completely win a combat for you like what do you reckon? Man, it really depends. So if okay, if I'm charging in the flank of something, then I don't really care when they charge. If they get the flank on something, they're gonna cause ten wounds and just you know even if it's a horde, they are my throwaway unit. They're two two hundred points, but I will charge them into anything. I'll charge him yeah. into a demon prince. Oh, I, yeah. I, it's rusty. I charge him into his demon prince, and I caused like three wounds on the first round of combat. It was yeah, nasty. Worth it. Yeah. Yeah, it worth it all day. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. Eh? But late game, if they live late game, then your opponent is doing wrong. Um, yeah, true. Because they are they're easy to kill with only a four up armor and a six up, but they just do so much damage. They do have frenzy which is something you have to remember. That is something to worry about. So they can mm. get baited out. Um, I don't know. I just do, love they have, do they have Vanguard? They do. They are fast cavalry. Hey, yes. Hey, right on. Oh, daddy. Yeah, they're they are moving. I mean, they're fast cav. It's, you're, with the banner of swiftness, you're marching 20 inches. Yeah, that's... that's wow. Yeah, okay. 
So, so you, are, were, you were picking you, whatever. You're, you're picking your combat with that unit, no worries. Oh, for sure. My plan is to, if I'm fighting a, a nasty monster that I need to kill, my plan is to pepper it with a couple arrows uh, from scouts, hopefully cause a wound or two, and then charge him with the um, uh, wild riders and hopefully kill it, or at least yeah. do enough to next turn kill it. Yeah. I like it. That's that's my plan with them. Good strategy. Thanks. So, the next thing, the uh, quintessential thing in any high elf or wood elf list, you have a great eagle. Uh, Token eagle, that. man. It's got to happen. So, there's a big debate between whether or not great eagles or warhawk riders are better. Right. Mm. I, I don't play what else, really, so I don't really, I can't, like, add to that conversation. But why did you bring a great eagle? Was it, was it just for points, or that was what you had painted up? Um, so, I like Warhawk Riders, but I also, I don't really like eagles. I've never liked really eagles too much. But after just thinking about it a little bit more and realizing what how they could really contribute to a Wood Elf list in terms of redirecting charges, or more yep. warmish content. Their, their main thing is redirecting charges. Yeah, uh, that's big probably time. their best attribute. Um, it's 50 points to do that, but when you can fly 20 inches and land almost anywhere on the field to have a, you know, I don't know, it's just the redirecting charge is just so huge for 50 yeah. points anywhere within 20 inches to keep any of your units safe that you really need to. Um, what are they? I think they have. Two, it's only like two strength four attacks uh, mm -hmm. in a stomp. If you have two yeah. of them, you can charge them into like a level one or level two wizard and kill it. And uh, So mainly war machine hunting and pretty much redirecting charges. Uh, well, yeah, I like, find war machine hunting is where they do well, except again, I think the only time I won't send them against artillery is if it's like dwarf artillery or um, obviously like a hell cannon or something like that. Because um, right. they just they just get beaten back, but like human and an elf artillery, yeah, no worries, get stuck in mm -hmm. all day. Yeah. I do like riders, but they're a hundred and I think it's 135 points for four of them base. Yep. Uh, so right. it's a bigger investment. You don't really want to use them as redirectors because they're expensive. Yep. They've got a bigger footprint as well, so it's it's harder to use them as redirectors like it is an eagle completely agree there uh mm. they're nice they have bows and when they charge like the warhawk i think it's like killing blowers or armor piercing yeah. or something like that, i remember uh so also great war machine hunters but more expensive they're kind of a hybrid yeah you see great so models though but not really but when they charge you got four attacks because you got your guy on top but I wish I don't actually even own any Warhawk Riders. I wish I did. Um, I wish I had like the Rhino Suckers just for looks. But just, just close. Yeah. So, so then, you cool. brought, <clears throat> then you brought a tree man with the shooting attack. Oh, yeah. Strangle. Strangle roots. Strangle roots. So this is what? This is, he's going to be stubborn nine, right? Yes. Yep. Is he going to be another anvil, or are you going to play aggressively with him? Uh, what I like to do with my tree, both, kind of. Um, yeah. What I like to do with the tree man is, most people, um, so yeah, he's only range 12, but he's doing D6 plus, I think it's D6 plus 1, strength 5 shots. He's BS6. Yep. When I tell people that, they don't know. I don't, I don't even know how a tree man is BS6, but whatever. He's, he has better ballistic skill than a weight watcher. Okay. Um, but you can march him up, shoot, and then let yourself get charged. So before, that's 2d6 plus 2 strength 5 hits before the combat even begins. Um, it's just nasty. Uh, yeah. I, I love the stubborn. I hate feeling stubborn 9 on a tree man and having it run down. That is like the worst feeling ever. Yeah. Uh, but he can smash some stuff. If you're going, if I run into a steam tank or something with him, oh, he's going to be tree whacking all day. He's going to be <laughs> whacking that tree everywhere. Um, I like it. 
what else? Uh, it just depends on what I'm fighting, but yeah, that's I really like, the only thing um, I can do. Yeah. I really like strangle roots for um when someone tries to um, redirect your treatment with like fast cab or something. It's like, nah, I'm just gonna just slap you all together with vines, like and yes, then just, there you go. Really so, stops people's plans. I'll just move around ten inches and I'll I'll shoot you. It's fine. Yeah, that's it. Does um can you stand and shoot with that? Yeah, it's a shooting yeah. attack. Cool. <clears throat> All right. So, I think that's gross. It's two d six. I move up. I can shoot you. So that's d six plus one is strength five. And then if you want to charge me, that's another d six plus one strength five. So it'd be a six. So they're gonna hit. It's yeah. And most likely they're gonna wound. It's like nine shots on average. If I'm eating. I'm needing no more than threes to hit you, pretty much. So I'm going to hit with these yeah. six. And then I'm going to cause at least probably four wounds to you before the combat starts. And it's a tree man. You know, he's got like four strength five attacks. Maybe five, I don't remember. Like five wounds and a thunder stomp. Mm. Causes terror. So you might yeah, not. Yeah, he's no slouch. You might run if I charge you. Yeah, he's not a slouch. And he's cheap. He's like 245 points, I think. Yeah, no, good one. flammable. Yeah. What's his <laughs> weapon skill? Six. Yeah, right. Be that's five. that's it's so five, good. But it might be six. So no good for a monster either way. Yeah, I think his weapon skill is six, BS six. Yeah. Nice. Rank five, jump to five, five moves. And he's got a yeah. three up. Save. <laughs> and a six up work. So the, the last thing you were able to sneak into your list blue was five way watchers. Yeah. Dude, yes. Uh, I think I think everyone knows what those do, you know. <laughs> BS five running around, shooting ignore armor shots or two shots of beast. Yep. Also a glass cannon. They don't have a freaking word. Sa- they don't have an armor save or a word save. So, magic missiles is oh. their are their main. Their yeah, main. It's hot their main. Yeah. But I find I find they can get their points back every game without fail. Yeah, if you're shooting, if you have like, um, I just forgot their names, Dragon Princes or Blood Knights or Chaos yep. Knights, anything Toughness 3 or, or any Empire Knights, anything Toughness 3 or 4 with a 1-up or 2-up save, I'm shooting those things at them all day. Yep. I like it. Now they, So my list, I tried to build it, build it pretty balanced. I pretty much took one unit except for scouts and eternal guard. I took one unit of pretty much everything I could just to really fill out the list. Um, Cause I'm trying to score sportsmanship points. I didn't want to lose and get like stomped every single game. So I took a level four. Yeah. Uh, I took the hit of the doom arrow, you know, but I think those are classic items. Um, yeah, man. That's, and look, look, Halo Doom is like super fluffy for what else. Yeah. The level four wizard is just it's the heart of Warhammer, man. Like it's just right. what makes it. So no, there's nothing wrong with your list at all. I think it's you know it's, it's just a nice normal list. You know what I mean? It's, no one's gonna look at that and go, geez. Like, you know, it's not so. good for some armies. Like if I have to fight Skaven, I'm in a world of trouble. Yeah. There are kill people that will eat up my units. Uh, there are massive mods. There are massive hordes. Uh, yeah. It's just too hard to move around because they have good skirmishers and good little units too that can you know help them out. Uh, yeah, I feel like Skaven, if they're having a good day and all of their like war machines are doing what it's supposed to, like no one can stop them. Like it's just one of those armies. Like if everything goes right, they just they'll just crush it. Yeah, they needed an eighth edition book. That's what they needed. Yeah, they really did. With less tables. Yes. Blue, what uh, what armies are you concerned about fighting with this list? Like, what are you going to struggle against? Skaven, 100. percent I'm going to struggle with Skaven. Um, which is always, I think, expected for what else? Any, any, mm. mostly. Okay, so most armies that are just T4, like all their stuff is just toughness four. That's just harder for what else. Um, I will tell you, this is the first list I've ever. Not taking like one unit of blade guard, which are just the core archers, but I wanted I wanted another eternal guard unit, so um, I did it. But I think anything toughness four will be painful because all my bows need fives to wound. 
anything with massive bodies, like even if undead just took a gajillion zombies and just skeletons, um, mm. that would be hard for me too. Uh, yeah. Anything that shoots a lot of magic missiles, because all my skirmishing units will just you know go poof. Yeah. I find unit. I find dwarves are a real issue, um, just because of the high toughness and they just outshoot elf armies. Like, yeah, they just stand there. And yeah. Just. You know, when, you, when you've got Wood Elves versus Dwarves and both armies are kind of playing the whole, yeah, you come to me. No, no, you come to me. Like, you know, the Elves, the elves lose out most of, most of the time just because of the War Machines, but, you know. Right. I okay, agree. Yeah. There's not much I can do. The only thing, if if I do fight a gun line, the best thing, like a Dwarf gun line, the best thing I can do is um, try and get to their sides and stuff because all their crossbows and handguns can't move and shoot. Um, yeah. But if if I'm having to fight if I'm having to fight like an Empire Oregon gun or no uh an uh shoot Empire Hellblaster uh mm. with an with an engineer I mean that's just gonna obliterate whatever or if I'm fighting a dwarf um Oregon gun with an engineer I mean that's gross if someone does that I don't know if that's I know that's like a really strong unit for their army uh. I don't know. I think anything artillery that just auto hits, like the, I think the Oregon gun auto hits, doesn't it? No. No, it still rolls to rolls to hit. Okay. It's the flame cannon that auto hits. That's right. Oh. Crazy. It's. I think that's it. Uh, a horde of bodies, something that has better fast sk- skirmishing unit than uh, stuff than me, and magic missiles and toughness force yeah. stuff. So there's there's plenty of things that I'm worried about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a sign. That's a sign of a good balanced list, though. You know, it's very strong, but it's got its weaknesses. So it's good. What um, flip side what arm is he looking forward to playing against? Yeah. Like, what are you hoping to, for a matchup? Uh, I hope to fight a heavy armored um, army with like six units on the field. <laughs> so Bretonia. <laughs> Dream world. You wanna. What okay, about- I would I want to play Bretonia, but not in the first scenario. Like, yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Actually, I don't want to fight Bretonia because if I have to fight against that Treb and that gets direct hit on my Eternal Guard, they're all dead. Yeah. <laughs> they're all dead. Play play against Bretonia. Wish. In the second scenario. That's what you want. Which one's that? That's the um the magic one. Okay. See, no, because okay. I have Laura Heavens. Oh yeah, no. Nah. They That'd might have nice. Heavens. They usually take Laura of Life sometimes too. Yeah, true. That's- Oh well, that sounds awesome, man. Like I'm excited for you. I can't wait to hear how it goes. Yeah. Thanks, man. Um, I'm not sure what I really want to play against. Anything, I don't care. Just All new players and have fun. As long as they're good fellows and ladies, whatever, or whatever. Um, I don't care. I'll just want to have fun, roll some dice. Uh, hopefully, no one's a tryhard. That's all I'm hoping for. Yeah, dude. Play against a dick. You know, I'm driving five hours to play fantasy. Don't be a dick. That's it. That's, that's the one rule. Yeah. Awesome, man. <laughs> All right, well, boys. Well, I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bounce out. But um, yeah. Wish you best of luck, Kyle. Um, uh, Kyle Blue, sorry. And um, just, man. You know, we're gonna have to do a follow up episode and just sort of have a breakdown of the events, see what happens, see you know, all good bits, bad bits, everything. Definitely works for me. I'm down. Excellent. Good, good luck. Roll lots of sixes. Yes, I'm pretty much fishing for sixes. Poison and everything else. I'm just fishing for sixes, guys. Key to victory. All right. Catch you later. All right. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.